This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from your boy Utaku Builder. So why don't we finally get started with the 172 scale Ray Leonard from the popular mech series Armor Core 4. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back my dudes and do a another exciting build from your boy Utaku Builder and if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome! It has been quite some time since I've tackled a Kotobukiya kit. I had my adventures building the Metal Gear Philanthropist and followed by the White Gillet from Armor Core 5, but we have another Armor Core game up on the horizon and we need to celebrate this momentous occasion by building the one, the only, and probably the most popular AC that is into the lineup, the 172 scale Ray Leonard. And can I geek out for just a brief moment my dudes and dudettes i have always always wanted to build this model kit the moment you saw it in the opening scene in armor core 4 and the playstation 3 you knew right then and there that this guy meant business taking on enemies left and right using its close and mid-range weaponry ah oh, i always wanted to build this model kit for such a long time and we are going to do it together first side of the box are we get a beautiful representation of the ray Leonard's weapon accessories and tons of tons of customizations when it comes to the core pieces that's right if you have an abundancy of armor core kits lying around you can mix and match these particular pieces into one unique build kind of like a kit bash in between itself but it's definitely great to see that you can actually do some more of this model kit and when you combine all these wonderful weapon accessories into one ac See, this bad boy looks absolutely impressive and one would definitely question is the weight distribution going to be a big problem shockingly enough it's not now without further ado let's take a look inside the box as always you are happily greeted with the instruction manual looking very simplistic but at the same time little hints of colors here and there showing what you can expect from the core pieces but when you look at the runners really and i mean really close this is not a simple kit. By far, this is bringing back a lot of post-traumatic stress syndrome when it came to building the white gillet a year ago. There are tons, and I mean tons, my dudes and dudes, tiny little pieces that are gonna be required to put together for this particular model kit, and shockingly enough, you are gonna need glue. That's right, it's really harder for most model kits nowadays, but Kotobuki has like a 50-50 thing where you're gonna need glue for specific key parts to keep them locked into place. As for the second to last page, you get a nice shot of the weapon accessories fully showing off their true articulation on the shoulders, followed by the actual bazooka again that sits in the back of the AC. And then you get a bonus weapon accessory on the side that I have never seen in the game, but it's definitely a nice little touch up to get because by far, there are tons of different variants of this particular EC in the marketplace, but this one's heavily emphasizing the intro, followed by the nice back shot of the actual structure manual showing how the EC looks when it's fully custom painted, followed by little hints of water slide decals and tons of great dynamic poses. Now these promotional show pictures are kind of Leading. It's definitely when you look at the actual color scheme for this AC, this one is a little bit on a soft gray brown, whereas the actual promotion one shows it, it's like between a gray, not a gray brown. So we're gonna be tackling the gray brown color texture because that looks even more cooler on the intro. So without further ado, let's talk about the runners. As always, Kotobuki is no stranger when it comes to the abundancy of runners, but their water slide decals for this kit is kinda on the weak side, so hopefully you have a couple of your own personal water slide decals lying around to make those areas pop out. Now the color scheme for this kit is between a tire black and a very neutral gray. And as for the weapon accessories themselves, the color separation is kinda on the weak side. I remember having this exact same challenge when I paint the white gillet last year, so I went for more of a metallic slash copper feel to it, but I'm definitely gonna go with a more of a flat gray to make that pop out just a little less. And as for the actual metallic pieces for this kit, here are the gold runners. Definitely kind of on the mess side because they have like a flat texture. This can easily be remedied if you have like your preference of a copper or a copper gold to make those areas pop out. So this kit really emphasizes you to really encourage yourself to actually do a custom paint job. Now the important question is, does this model kit live up to the hype? Well, my dudes and dudes, we're gonna find out on this adventure of building another AC. Okay, so as I'm priming myself for my crazy work week from Amazon, I have already taken the liberty of cutting out every individual runners in their own designated spot because this organizer is a great buy when you actually need it for something this small. So. The plan for this model kit is actually going to be relatively simple. One, we're going to be tackling key areas that require just a little bit more finesse when it comes to custom building and custom painting. But above all else, I want to do some custom denting on the surface for this model kit. Now, what do I mean by that is Armor Core 6 has a fantastic, and I mean a fantastic surface detail on their ACs, showing that these particular machines have been through the wear and tear due to the war zones, and really emphasize that these guys aren't like pristine and clean and, and smooth looking like you get from your exotic Fast and the Furious car. 
are. No, these guys are worn torn. So we're definitely gonna emphasize it with this Dremel tool. Now the idea where I, what I'm really trying to pull off with this is to give like some nice surface wear and tear, but I don't want to be too obvious where it's like, very predictable. So the idea when you do this particular surface denting is to make it as random as possible. But don't put too many things onto it. It actually makes it a little too awkward. Kind of looks like Swiss cheese at this point. But the idea is to make it as random as possible. So I'll take this test strip and work with this and then apply the exact same indentation surface detail on the other remaining pieces. My heart bit bit apart, honestly, it's not in my control. Try to do what's good for you, don't believe it, say you didn't know. Oh, how seasons change, winds picking up, I bet I look up. Cause you said something, then I said something. Okay, so the surface detail is finally done for the designated pieces. It's now time to work on the head unit. Now, compared to its counterpart from the white gillet, this particular armor core head does not have any clear runners. That's right, that iconic red visor that you see in the intro is gonna require some custom finessing. Now, what I mean by that is it's gonna be relatively simple but complex. I am essentially gonna be dribbling out that axis plastic that sits at the very bottom part of the chin and then put like a nice mesh around it, get that nice grill look. Now, what exactly do I mean by a mesh grill? Hasagawa has these really thin pieces of metals that have these tiny little pinholes that are inside the metal to create like this nice rectangular circular texture onto the surface. This is what they call a model mesh. And thankfully enough, Burbank Hobbies had this when I needed to get it at the time. Hasegawa is the main dudes to purchase it from. And this particular mesh is gonna be great to pull off that nice like separation around the visor. Now it does require some eyeballing here and there, but that's not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna just do my best what I can to work what I need to work with to make this effect look really cool. So that worked out better than I thought. This piece is ready to be primed and painted, and now it's time to tackle the one iconic spot on the EC, and that's gonna be the booster. Now, I'm gonna end up drilling a small hole in the hole through this part and sticking a fiber optic light right through it. There's no need to put in a very bright LED, but just enough to the point to give this area a little bit more of a dynamic flair to it. That's what I'm gonna try to pull off right here.
Okay, so we've reached phase two when it comes to putting custom LED lights in this particular AC. So what we're gonna essentially do is we're gonna hollow out a small little section inside the head from the top part of the head, shining the LED light downward to the chin section. Since there is enough metallic paint there, it's gonna create a nice refractive effect to make that grill section really pop out. So before I was getting over ahead of myself, I wanted to make sure I installed an LED light inside these thrusters. Now, it wouldn't make sense to put each individual thruster with its own independent LED light. So each one of these is going to be housing one big LED light. So I'll be sticking there a Dika LED light to illuminate just enough to make that effect look really cool. And at the same time, make sure that is actually installed there properly, because if the alignment of the LED is off, one thruster is going to be brighter than the other. And that's something I don't want to really do. I want to keep it light consistent. So just like what I mentioned earlier in the video, I told you dudes into that set, when you add that little extra surface dental deformity, it looks even amazing when the paint is set and done dry. But what's even more stellar is uh, that LED light for the head looks absolutely amazing. Super happy how that turned out. And especially for the thrusters in the bag, Mwah, chef's kiss. Okay, so now that the upper body is finally done, took 
way too long than it needed to be. The legs, forearms, and actual weapon accessories need to be tackled next. So I'm going to go with the exact same color scheme for the main body with little key areas with a little bit of a hint in white. And then actual weapon accessories is going to be a combination between metallic colors and neutral gray colors. Alright my dudes and duds, we are literally at the home run stretcher and now we're going to do the one part that I absolutely love and that's going to be custom weathering in three different stages. Stage 1 is essentially going to be applying a chipping effect, stage 2 is going to be some light weathering with particular color paints and then follow it up with a nice dark color behind it. Now this particular section is going to require some very simple tools such as a lantern brush, a toothpick and your choice between Mr. Hobby, soft sand ground and then a nice dark brown and then for the emphasis on metallic areas we're going to be using Tamiya's lacquer based paint silver and then we're going to use that coral sponge to create a nice little flaking and scattering effect for specific key areas to create that nice little texture. As you can see here from the test strip, I actually only use a toothpick that actually works very well. But if you want to go with the lanyard and do like a nice dry brush effect, you can go that route too. But this time around, I'm going to try something a little bit different. My dudes and do that as this video is wrapping up i want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions of this model kit and let me just get this out of the way armor core kits have a big big problem when it comes to posability and articulation now that's not by no means the fault of the manufacturer but as for the art directions of how these acs are made yeah there's going to be conflict between putting these guys at dynamic poses because in reality they're kind of designed just to be static which is kind of unfortunate now that has nothing to do with the fact that they have stiff ball joints oh my goodness i 
I got a brief story to tell you about that, but I'll get into that later. Um, no, the ball joints on this kit are fantastic. You won't have any weapon droop. You won't have any weapon drip. That sounds like weird to you, but there, there's no complications with that at all. And when it comes to attaching weapons to certain key areas on the AC, it's not a problem. Definitely what's really impressive with this kit is the abundancy of glue that I had to use on specific key areas. I mean, definitely caught me off guard you know i'm really happy i had some glue going around so i have no problem with that i say probably by far the most fun part was just trying the right kind of color temperature for this particular ac i really really want to emphasize like this dirty worn down um overused ac kind of look and i, I think i pulled it off very well I really wanted to go for a clean look, but I really want to try to put more emphasis on making these ACs look more dynamic, you know, show that you really put a lot of work and effort into that. Now, uh, another thing that's definitely a big controversial part of this kit is the price. I'll even put a brief video up here for you guys. Like the price for these AC kits are ranging from three to four hundred dollars. And it by no means has nothing to do with the popularity of the actual Armor Core series um, lineup. It has to do with the fact that there are many manufactured, there's like a very low supply, there's not much demand out there, so it's really tackle for those our, uh, Armor Core purists and those um, model kit builders enthusiasts that want to challenge, and by, by all means, these kits are extremely challenging to build, but man, I, ooh, that price. Uh, this this kit wouldn't be possible from the support from patrons, okay? I'm just gonna be real with you. This kit right here costs close to $300. By no stretch of the means is this kit worth $300. Kodobuki kits usually lean between the price range between $100 to $120, which is just fine. $300 is a bit of a stretch, and I would not recommend anyone to buy these Armor Core kits unless you're willing to go the extra step of custom painting and custom modifying these kits. If you're just buying them for the sake of just a straight up build, it's going to have less of an impact on, on your shelf. Let's be real here. It, you're not going to have much interest of wanting to do more with it. And that's just my honest opinion about that. But other than that, the fun factor for this kit, it's great. It's fun. It's challenging. My goodness, it was really challenging when it came to putting custom LEDs in this, but it's very difficult to recommend this because that price tag is really, really bugging me. And I cannot and I will not recommend this kit for anyone who is not uh, a model kit enthusiast or uh, an experienced builder. If you got the lettuce, the burn, and you want to say a talk builder, I'm going to build what I want because I got the money. By all means, you do you. But I'm generally looking out for the average consumer on on who this kit can really go for. Right now, with my skill set, I, I definitely can pull it off. The average consumer that just wants to do a straight up build, they will get frustrated, they will put the kit away, they won't even bother gluing pieces together, and they'll probably end up reselling it. But here's the wonderful thing. Armor Core 6 just came out, tons of hype behind it, great range of customization, awesome AC designs. There's a high probability we'll be getting Armor Core kits next year. We just have to wait, and by all means, I'm kind of okay with that, okay? <laughs> but uh, without further ado, uh, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video. As always, please like and share this video, and share amongst your friends and family. And for those who are new, please hit that subscribe button, and as always, I will see you dudes and dudes on the next video.